All righty. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> you have a long week. Did you have a long weekend? Or did you have to work Friday? I worked Thursday and Friday. Oh, my God. You worked on Thursday as well. <laughs> Business as usual. For you. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. All right. Well, I had... Um, I was away, but I wasn't. It wasn't a holiday. I was actually working. I, I had work on Wednesday and Friday and Saturday, mm -hmm. so I didn't really feel like it was a holiday. Plus, I was in KZN, and we've got to talk about that a little bit because I haven't been down there for over a year. Yeah, is it is it holding together? Probably like a year and a half. Were there roads? Well, <laughs> shame. Yeah, we got to talk about that. We got to talk about uh, the the Kate Middleton video and um, all the conspiracy theorists, nutcase lunatics, who are coming out on that front. You know, oh, there's so much to talk about today. And then the third thing, I mean, this Marcus Eusta situation mm. too, which is also a source of a lot of um, conspiracy theories. You know what's happened, right? I was talking to friends of mine on this on this friends WhatsApp group that I've got. And one of them was like, we can't believe anything anymore. Yeah. You know, in the light of this this Kate Middleton cancer video, she put it out and she said, no, you know, part of the reason she's uh, she she was trying to figure out how to tell her kids that mm. she's actually been diagnosed with cancer. She's going through some chemo. Uh, she should be okay, but she's worried. Uh, in the meantime, she, she just wants everyone to know that uh, they're treating her and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this video came out. It all looked fine. I felt kind of relieved for her that she'd got it out there because there's mm. such bullshit in the world. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, there's still people who think it's fake. They were looking at it going, oh, but if you look at the video and you zoom in here and you check the still shots of this and you're going to find out that it was made by AI. And Oh, my goodness. Anyway, I mean, listen, the problem is ever since COVID, where we were lied to about pretty much everything, we were told to stay in our houses no dissent was tolerated. Mm. What it did is it unleashed the stupidity among humans. Like this unbelievable, unstoppable, unbridled stupidity. Where now you either are one of those people who believes everything mm. or you're one of those people who believes nothing. Yeah. And there's nothing in between. You, you, we have abandoned the battlefield of reason and we've decided to chase after Either the government is always right and we should always listen to experts mm. or they're never right and they're lying to us all the time and we must never trust anybody. It must, be, it must be difficult for the people who are telling the truth, who are high-powered or high up, um, to know that we probably might not believe them. <laughs> well, this is it, right? Uh, you can now, because it used to be that at least you could be qualified. You know, I'm a... I'm a professor at this university mm, i'm an expert i'm an expert you still see these idiots pop up on like tv news proffering their opinions as experts but so many of them have been discredited and in doing so we've discredited the whole system also merit is not a thing anymore you know in the whole world we've got like diversity equity inclusion stuff which means that you've got some like uh some woman who did social studies fixing Boeing aircraft. Yeah. And you're like, I, I, can't, I don't want to climb on the plane if mm -hmm. that's what's going. I don't need the social science major uh, being represented on the engineering team of an aircraft building company. You yeah. know what I mean? So we've And there are these people as well who are taking up those positions willingly. Yeah. I would never want to have the responsibility of saying I can fix a plane if I only know about social science. Well, all I can say is we have, we have now, we reap what we sow, right? So yeah. we've done, we've now brought about our own confusion. So when the princess of Wales, who's one of the most famous people in the world and one of the most photographed people in the world, when she appears on what seems to me, I mean, I'm not... I'm not looking for a reason to believe in the conspiracy theories, and I'm also not looking for a reason not to. Mm. It seems to me like this is an honest plea from a, a mom and a wife and a woman who's under a lot of pressure at the moment, dealing with a health condition. And I've heard these stories about you know women who go in for uh, abdominal surgery of some kind, 
She's always been terribly thin. Maybe she had an eating disorder. Who knows? It's none of our business, actually. Mm, mm. But then she goes in for this and then they discover cancer. We know that the king has got cancer. Yeah. They're under a lot of pressure as a family. There's no one they can lean on. They've got Harry and Meghan who, you know, did a runner and mm. decided to drop them in the shit. So they've got like what? Camilla and Edward and Sophie running around doing everything at the moment. Mm. And William, obviously. But, you know, I'm like, this poor woman, she goes out there, she's she's trying to cope with this thing, and now people are saying, well, even that video is fake. You see, now why would, what do they think she would be hiding if she said she had cancer? Well, I mean, people are the wackiest, most stupid stuff. But it's all because we don't know what is true anymore. Yeah. And this is, an, this is as a result of, and I hate to sound like someone is trying to make a <laughs> create a category out of one out of a situation where there probably isn't a category but i think this is the fault of of postmodernism it's this idea that everything is gray mm. nothing is black or white nothing is true or untrue everything is just shades yeah and, and the things that i never believed before that i'm seeing in stupid things like a sci-fi movie i'm now thinking could that be true <laughs> Well, this is it. Where I never would have thought that before. And and it is, I, I, I'm going to sound like a conspiracy theorist now too, but the people who have been convincing us that there's your truth and my truth and there's no such thing as the truth, mm. those people have basically won this battle because now nobody knows what the truth is anymore. And what it is, is it's extremely demoralizing. Mm. So if you wake up in the morning and you no longer know what to believe, all the news has got to be fake. All the information that I see is just generated to confuse me and put me in the matrix or whatever. Mm, lies. That's a demoralizing way to live. It's like, actually, no, you, you, you don't need to fall for all that crap mm. because there are such things as the laws of physics. There are such things as history and the, and, and the way humans have behaved for thousands of years that are true. Mm. Wasn't, are, wasn't gravity just questioned recently? Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I mean, like out, out to you know, the north. I wouldn't know? be surprised because people have just, they've become unmoored from reason. Yeah. So we're living in the age of unreason. And, and it's driving me to distraction, not because I'm confused or because I think that everything is untrue or I think it's all true, but because I'm, I have to figure it all out myself from beginning mm. principles, right? It's a lot so of work. It's a lot of work. So it's exhausting. But then you do encounter really fucking dumb people every day. Yeah. Who, because of the internet, oh. they now have not only access to stupid and good sources, and they always tend to the stupid ones, mm. but also they have a voice. I mean, before, as I've said to so many people who worry about you know, social media, and I'm one of those people sometimes, so I'm not going to exclude myself from that group. But, you know, there used to be a time where if you drove past some drunk, meth-head, homeless person on the side of the road, and they were shouting and yelling and, and, and dancing without clothes on, and the world's going to end, mm. you would just know to ignore them. Yes. <laughs> you would know. It wouldn't be an issue. Now, because those people have an X account or because they've got a YouTube channel, yeah. people think you have to listen to them. You don't. Please believe me. You can disregard three quarters of the people you encounter online. Mm. If you don't know them in real life, just disregard them anyway. Yeah. Just ignore them. If you've never met them or you don't know that they're a real person, there is no reason for you to pay attention to them. Mm. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll post something. For example, I posted a thing about Elon Musk and Don Lemon. There was that whole thing last week. Yeah. I made the stupid mistake of going to look at what came after. Oh, on your, the comments on your own, on your own comment. Yeah, exactly. I was just, I was like, wow. And then you try to figure out, is this a stupidity at a level of my followers? Yeah. Have I caused, have I caused this? Is it a stupidity <laughs> at the level of the country? Because we are in a stupid country. I mean, you can see what happens in South Africa. Mm. I mean, even with the Marcus Eustace story, which we still have to get to, like there's a lot of stupidity just 
completely uncontrolled. Mm. So you think, oh no, it's our country. It's a fair assumption to make. Then you think, maybe it's humanity. Yeah. Maybe it's the whole fucking planet. Maybe all these people are crazy. Then you start despairing. Yeah. So I'm here this morning to tell you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just pay no attention to the crazies. Yeah, it's difficult. It's like being lied to by your, your partner and you can never, ever trust them again. They, they, it's a, there's this term, a term that everyone uses now, gaslighting. Mm -hmm. But it is a, it's a thing that humans have become increasingly good at on the internet. Yeah. And now it's become also something that is an excuse for everything. It's like the moment someone tells you something because you need to hear it and you don't want to hear it, you go, don't gaslight me. But actually you need to hear it because mm. it might be true. The high probability, you know. And also people have got so good at masking and pretending. You know, uh, you, you meet a businessman, for instance, mm. and you will trust him and say to other people, oh, I met this guy and he's got a really good business. Purely based on his personality. Well, like Steinhoff. Maybe. You haven't walked yeah, like through Steinhoff. his factory. Uh, this, guy, <clears throat> this guy was lying. Yeah. I, I, please don't misunderstand me with the whole Steinhoff thing. I mean, I've been saying, and I still believe Marcus Huerster is going to be one of the most evil people in the last 50 years. Mm. The, the number of South Africans who lost all their savings, sure. most of their savings, huge amounts of their investments. And I'm talking about pensioners, you know, because we go at like VBS, and we yeah. talk about the EFF and, and people like Julius and Floyd and Floyd's brother who were, who were directly involved in the, the VBS scandal. And we talk about those gogos in Limpopo who've lost everything. Yeah. You know, they were, they were like saving for their whole lives 10, 20, 30 rand a month, every month, their whole life long, so that they could live in anything but poverty in, the, in, the, in their old age. Mm. And we're, we're rightly and justifiably angry with that whole VBS scandal. But it's no different with Steinhardt. Millions and millions of people who lost millions and millions of rands mm. because of this crook. So he goes down onto a beach and he kills himself mm. because they're about to close, in, close the net on him. You know, he's him. Been, he has to because, go to jail. Because what people don't understand is the wheels of justice do turn slowly. So... It was going to take a while. But now you again see lunatics on the internet say, wow, he didn't really kill himself. He's gone to live on a horse farm in Argentina or something. I mean, it's the same people who believe Hitler's still alive. Mm. It's the same people who be, believe Elvis is like <laughs> running a auto a parts Jackson. dealer. You know, Michael <laughs> Jackson was never really dead. And Princess Diana is, uh, is running a, a, a landmine uh, clearing <laughs> With business. With <rats. laughs> Who knows, you know? So it's all part of the same problem. First and foremost, the fact that we genuinely did lose faith in all of our institutions because the people who would have had our faith and our trust lied to us during COVID. Mm -hmm. and the whole world was shut down and it was a fuck up. Mm, we still and, and, haven't recovered. And, and those of us who said it was were told to shut up. Yeah. From the doctors who signed the Great Barrington Declaration right the way down to, you know, People who have a show and a podcast like mm. us, and I was saying, mm, this is not, I don't like this lockdown idea. Forget about the disease. I don't, I'm not a <laughs> virologist or yeah. an epidemiologist, but I, I said from the beginning, this lockdown thing is a stupid idea. Yeah, you did. And people were like, no, you shut up, you're dangerous. So then we lost faith. And what has it been replaced by? It's been replaced by wild conspiracy theories and now the conspiracy theorists because they were right about one or two things now they think they're right about everything yeah. so now we've <laughs> so the got, world is flat in other yeah, words yes so now the loch ness monster's true and you know there's there's an alien ship beaming down messages to control the reptilians who actually are in charge of us and it's just like it's just a total mess it's an all or nothing situation right and i'm saying that's not how it is mm -hmm. calm everyone calm down you still need to go to a doctor if you want your appendix removed, mm. you still go to a lawyer. If you want to fight someone in court, you still need to read a few books. If you, if you want to know something mm. and the last place to look for this stuff is on social media, Ooh. social media 
That's what's making people confused. And you shouldn't have to follow it, you know? Um, qualifications and things aside, because I do think that the, you know, the postmodernists have a lot to answer for here in making truth a thing that can't be zeroed in on. Mm. There are things that are true. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, if you, if there are certain economic policies that lead to prosperity and there are other economic policies that lead to misery. Mm. Helen Ziller was on uh, X all over the weekend, interviewed by some dude who was asking her like he's, like he's discovered some nugget of gold. He goes, well, Helen, uh, how do you know that if the EFF come to power, the RAND will tank? You're like, oh, God, okay, we have to go back. We have to go all the way back to this. Because this guy who's supposedly smart, I don't know who he is. Uh, he was interviewing her. Now, everyone on, certainly on black Twitter, which, again, you know, if, if you're going to go somewhere for stupid, that's a great place to start. But they were all like, yeah, actually, that's a good point. How does Helen Zilla know? Well, okay. There are two ways we can figure this, guys. Number one, we can go there and find out. Mm. Like we can, what she said is put Julius in charge of a province and see what happens to that poor province, mm. right? You don't have to like Helen Zilla. This has got nothing to do with your feelings about Helen Zilla. Yeah. So we can do that and cost one of the provinces their lives yeah, <laughs> and jobs and everything. Or we can look at history and we can go everywhere they've tried the policies that the EFF are talking about that country has suffered enormously. The people have become poorer. Mm. The currency has tanked. They can't live there any. It's Ask uh, Javier Millet in Argentina, who's turning that place around for a free market capitalist economy from what it was before, which is more or less along the lines of a Venezuela yeah. and an EFF Led. utopia. Mm. Go and ask them. And, and you'll figure it out. You'll see how how much sense this makes. But now, you know, it's all like, oh, that old Helen Zilla, what does she know? Like, guys. It doesn't have anything to do with, that question could have been posed to anyone who has any ounce of experience in the world. God, there's some stupidity. Online, it's just insane. And then I come from a province now where they really have had the shit beaten out of them. So KZN, it's worth remarking on that. I had a lovely time down there with the people that I saw. Um, I, I was down there for an event that we did on, on the Wednesday. And then we had, I actually, I, I did a, a DJ gig of all things. What? On, yeah, wiki, yeah, wiki. yeah, yeah, wiki, wiki. I, was, I was terrible, but it was, <laughs> but it was great. The crowd was lovely. It was fun. But I've got to tell you, like, the place is in trouble. Yeah. You know, um, between uh, the riots and the floods and just generally that province is not looking very good. It's not looking tidy. It's not looking organized. It's not looking like it's being run by anybody. Mm. It is, it's just a mess. It used to be a very proud city. You know, Durban particularly. Yeah, con considering that it's not Cape Town, okay? It doesn't have what Cape Town has. No. And it's not Joburg, but still just a very proud, clean, happy city. Yeah, well, Durban it, it did. I used to love going down there. I said, Listen, I still do. It was, it was nice to be there, but it's a shadow of itself. And I feel desperately sorry for the people who live there and who are not responsible for that, for mm. all of this. I mean, it, it's nobody's fault that there are floods, for no, example. No, there have been actual you know, natural disasters. That's nobody's fault. But the place is just being run so badly. And you've got people like that, uh, uh, the, the former mayor of Etequini, I mean, just like the, the worst kind of people. Zandile Gumed. Mm. Remember her? Just like the most crooked, rotten. And, and then, and then she, she comes back from political death. And you think, how, how could they resurrect that old uh, crook? Yeah. And you see the way that the premier is now fighting with, because the ANC there is fighting, the IFP is fighting with MK. Mm. It's like, Guys, none of you are going to be able to run this place properly because none of you want to. You're all just struggling for power. Yeah. No one's actually like running the place is hard work and it's boring and it's not about power. It's actually about getting stuff done. Mm, graft. Grafting. Yeah. And, and none of you can do it. You're all cuck at this. We, you've proven it. Wherever the ANC has run things in KwaZulu Natal, it has not got better for the people. You know, we were talking, for example, about how. Um, people used to go there for holidays. 
or even save up again their whole lives to retire there. And perhaps just go there for the weekend, you know, on the other mm. side of the spectrum. And it, it's like now you'd have to have your head red. Yeah. Like no one is putting Durban on their list of places they're really keen to go to unless they've never been there before and they don't know how shit it is. In which case, yeah, sure, you can go there and, you know, you might even find something to make you smile. But I'm telling you, it's hard as hard as nails there. Mm. The and people are not enjoying themselves. The city looks like it has been shat on oh. by aliens and Bigfoots and Loch Ness monsters. Mm. So I really hope they can sort the place out because it seems to me like that is a, that is a, a, a story of just wreck and ruin yeah. as opposed to like improvement. And you go to a place like the Western Cape and you see improvement, which is why people are semigrating down there. Yeah. See yeah. improvement and you see people who are happy in their jobs, happy to have their jobs. Right. Generally upbeat. Yeah. Well, that's if you can afford to live there. <laughs> so, well, that's the other thing, right? It's like you, you need money. Um, and, and we've got to grow this economy. So why don't we listen to people who know how to grow economies? Who've proven yeah. that they can. And not listen to people who don't know a damn thing about running their own personal household. Like it's one yeah. thing to talk about the state and money. But when a cigarette baron is funding you and you don't actually own the house you live in and you're living beyond your means and buying jackets that cost hundreds of thousands of rands with money you didn't earn because mm. you're an MP, that's your salary. We know how much you're meant to have. It's not enough to buy that stuff. Mm. Like, like the same can be said for pastors. Then we should not listen to you when it comes to matters pertaining to the wallet. Yeah. You know? Anyway. Uh, a couple of comments here. Uh, you know, when you put a potato in a microwave, select the pizza option, but when you open the microwave, it's still a potato. <laughs> it's the same thing when you choose your gender. Not sure how gender came into it, but yeah, I, I mean, that's another part of the story, right? Is that we're now led to believe that if people feel a certain way, then that must make it true. Yeah. And that's just not how the world works. I'm afraid that the world is not interested in how you feel about stuff. Um, and and I'm I'm just over these arguments. It really it's it, how much more must we try to beat this dead horse yeah. for people to get it? Um, Carl says, "Will they now get that fine money from Eustace's estate?" No, well, I don't know how it works, but I keep thinking, "All right, like he's a bad man and he's a crook and he's all of these things, but he's also got kids and a wife." Not that I'm suddenly sympathetic to them, but. I kind of wonder how it must be to be a kid of someone. It's must like being Al Capone's kid, you know? Yeah. If you go to school and what all the other kids go, stay away from me. Mm. Kind of shitty. It's and really when it's not it's your shit. fault again. It's shit of him to have done that mm. to his children because it was greed. That was that was all it was. Greed and corruption. We talk about corruption. That's what it is. Uh, JP says, hectic weekend. What about the terrorist attacks by ISIS and Russia? Oh, that's another thing. I tried to follow that story. And again, you don't know what to believe. You're like, so these guys were shouting Allo Akbar, which is not beyond the realms of reason. Let's just be clear about that when it comes to terrorism. That, that, that <laughs> you know, Islamic extremists are responsible for more terrorism in the world than any other group by a long way, by a wide margin. So that's not an unbelievable thing. Mm -hmm. But then you see the conspiracy theorists again. Oh, it was Ukraine. Maybe there's a there's a possibility it could have been Ukraine, and Ukraine sent these guys in to do this to destabilize, make Russia feel uncomfortable, um, anger Vladimir Putin. Who knows what the you know? There are all these theories yeah, going around. We can be told the truth on that, but we we still won't believe. We it. still won't believe it. No. And then people saying, "Well, it's the U.S." And how did the U.S. know before it happened? Well, I don't know. I don't know the answers to these things, but it'll all come out eventually. Uh, Tracy says, friends of mine lost their entire retirement in the Steinhoff crash. And because he's not senior management, he was not compensated in the payout that was made last year. Mm. They look after their own. Oh, man. That's tough as hell. Sure. Uh, you can't even follow the weather reports, says Propaganda. <laughs> yeah, you see? What? Uh, I feel sorry for my family. Berylum was one of the cleanest towns. Now they throw litter next to the bins instead of into. 
yeah, you see there are places, BS in, in KZN that are just awful. There's just no pride anymore. Yeah. And, and some of this you can blame on the government, mm. but some of it you've also got to blame on the people. Because I saw a thing, it was Gareth von Onselen said on, on X over the week. I, I've actually realized like my life was much happier when I wasn't on there all the time. Yeah. Now I'm back You're happy on. You're in a bit of a tiz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, I've got to, to give myself a, like a diet. I've got to go on a diet for this. Like you can't yeah, eat, you've you can't do eat like, cake. You, I think you've got to do like, um, what's the fasting? Yeah. You have, to, you have to severely limit your intake. Yeah. And then maybe give yourself a little little insight, but then walk away again. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that true, Gareth, terrorist attack? You see, again, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Matt, and, and frankly, it is confusing. The four guys who attacked the concert have been ca uh, caught already. I saw videos of those, and they're like torturing them and kicking them. And Yeah, there's that. And then oh, I actually wanted to bring it up, and it's kind of, related but this south african yacht crew three people on board on board yeah. this yacht um that worked this yacht yes they were on their way from zanzibar to durban and all of a sudden the mozambican navy surrounded them started shooting at them um and then arrested them took them in and tortured them for days jesus tortured them asking if they were part of isis uh two and a half days interrogation they kept knocking them about with these AK forty sevens. Uh, the ones, the one person who was fifty nine is fifty nine years old. Started actually passing blood in his urine. That's how they were torturing wow. this crew. Um, Imagine you just get you, the the people who, who who go and sign up for this work, and it's hard work. I mean, they earn, yeah. they earn good money, but you're just trying to earn a job, earn a living rather, uh, and earn some money in a job. And uh, this has to happen to you. Again, when you're telling the truth and not being believed, how horrible for days. Oof. And all they had done was avoid some bad weather. <laughs> but yeah. I saw a story <laughs> to completely change the, the tack on this thing. I saw a story that Beyonce was like complaining about how her new song, which is just the going, Texas everybody loves one. it. I even said I like it and I do. Mm. Um, I saw this story about Beyonce. She's complaining that, oh, she's she never f felt welcomed by the uh, country music awards or, or or country music in general. You know, community of yeah. country music. I was like, you have to work really hard to feel like a victim if you're Beyonce. <laughs> I mean, that woman gets more praise than any singer, with the possible exception of Taylor Swift. Yeah. Just, her fans are lunatics, Taylor and Beyonce's, mm. right? And, and I'm sitting there going, wow, we have to make time out of, out of our busy days with all of the stuff we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes to feel sorry for Beyonce because she hasn't been like embraced by the country music community <laughs> That's yet. That's ridiculous. I'm like, I, I, you know what? I'm prepared to put up with a lot of shit in my life, but not that. Yeah. I'm, I refuse, point blank, to feel sorry for Beyonce Knowles. Carter. I mean, I refuse. How hard did you have to think that one up? Jeez. I saw the story and I was like, you've got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> She's married to Jay Z, who <laughs> is independently one of the wealthiest people in music history. So is she. Yeah. They seem to be happily married. They seem to have good children. They seem to be popular, universally popular. They like, the, they're among that very small cater of artists who get invited to the white house and wherever they go people just fake them mm. they are they are celebrated like a celebrity should be if they're a true famous person they're like the luckiest people in the world by any margin there's no part of jay-z or beyonce's life where you go oh mm, shame. i wouldn't want that oh shame <laughs> it's so hard for them they're friends with all the people that you would want to be friends with in america they have power, they have influence, they have, it seems, the perfect life. And now because, I don't know, like five people in America said they didn't love Beyonce's country song, now we must all take time out of our day to feel sorry for her. No. I'm, like, I'm pretty sure the story didn't come from her. I'm sure it's some bullshit on the internet, like most stuff is. Yeah. 
speaking of. But I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm not going to make time to feel sorry for Beyonce. That I'm not going to do. No. I'll, put, I'll do a lot, but not this. <laughs> so I thought that needed some comment this morning. Yeah. All right. Let us go to the sport because we have producer James here. Hello, producer James. How are you? Let me turn on your mic. There we go. Hello. How are you? Maura, I'm very well. How are you? Good. What's been happening with you? How was your weekend? It was good. I shaved. I have no beard anymore. Uh, is this the new look for producers going forward? Because Ryan had a beard. You felt you had to have a beard. You were doing it for a transition. Um, what do they say? It changes as good as a haircut or something, right? <laughs> All right. Well, nobody cares about your facial That's hair. Fair. What they care about is the sports results from the weekend. And there's quite a lot to go through. By the way, in case you were wondering, because some people were messaging me over the weekend saying, why the hell didn't you do a show on Thursday? Well, Thursday was a holiday. And Friday, well, I wasn't here. So, yes, we didn't do shows on Thursday and Friday. Mm. So, you know what? We're back this week. And guess what? We'll be doing Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And not Friday. Again. No, Friday is a holiday. <laughs> Friday is good Friday. It's Easter. We've got to make it good. And then one. Sunday. Sunday is, is Easter. Easter. And that means Monday we've got the day off as mm. well. So April Fool's Day, you won't have to hear from us either. There Aww. you go. And it won't be an April Fool's joke. No. Okay, just <laughs> clearing this up so people know what the hell's going on. All right. Let's take a look at some of the sport. This is, of course, brought to you by Superbets. These are the people we talk to every week when it comes to figuring out where we should place our bets and who we should place them on and what kind of sports betting there is available to you. If you're a person who loves sport, you can love it even more when you've got money on it. That's true. That's the way I see it. It made me love sport. Especially if you're betting on the South African teams this week. Yeah, I would just fall asleep while you were talking about sport before or when Ben was talking about it. Now, I listen in <laughs> case I've got, in case I got <laughs> money on it. Yeah, all right. Okay, so what do we got? Um, so we'll start with the rugby. Not an awful lot of sport this weekend. Um, there wasn't a lot of football, so... That cancels out a whole weekend for a lot of people. Mm. Um, but again, starting with the rugby, if you bet on the South African teams this weekend, you would have done very well. It was right. a clean sweep for all of them. Uh, Sharks played against Ulster. They won 22-12 there. Um, at home, Stormers played Edinburgh 43-21 to the Stormers. Um, and then the away South African teams, the Lions, they played, I don't know how to say this, Con Connacht. That's Connacht. The That's the one. Uh, they won 38-14, um, and then the Bulls played against the Dragons, 31-10 to the Bulls. Is that why you were asking me about Irish um, people and what they speak and how? Interestingly, no. I actually saw something else that sparked that question, but now I see there's a team here that is probably Ar Irish, I'm, I'm assuming. No, Connaught's Irish. Right. See? Weird, weird words. Mm. <laughs> uh, moving on to the Formula One, a uh, hectic weekend in the motorsport world. Uh, Ferrari one and two for the first time, um, and we had Carlos Sainz winning that Grand Prix, okay. uh, which means that the Spaniard um, ended Max Verstappen's winning streak um, in the Formula One. He's also the first driver um, who's not Max Verstappen to win a race in the last twenty-one races, which is insane. Good uh, Some changes there would be welcome. I know the world of motorsports crazy at the moment. For Stepan, he also retired early. Nobody saw that coming with brake issues, and then both Mercedes cars didn't finish uh, the Australian Grand Prix. This Controversial, week. yeah, a little bit. Uh, George Russell involved in a little bit of an accident, and then Lewis, if I'm not mistaken, was an engine problem. So he also left the track a little bit early, and then on to the MotoGP again. Good news for South Africans. Brad Binder claimed fourth at the Portuguese Grand Prix. Mm. Um, he's currently second in those overall standings, and the MotoGP still runs until November. Okay. He's got a chance okay. to to well, uh, win it. Brad so, Binder's yeah. done us proud, and again, yeah. I, I yeah. don't see I don't see any like uh, welcome parties for him at Or Tambo whenever he no. gets back here. There's no mm. fuss made, but he's probably one of the most successful sports yeah. people in South Africa Absolutely. for the last. 20, 30 years. Absolutely. Especially in that field. I mean, right. I, I don't remember the last time there was. And I haven't seen Cyril take a moment out of his busy schedule of doing nothing to congratulate Brad Binder either. I wonder why that's strange. Okay, anyway. <laughs> no conspiracy theories. I've actually watched racing in, you know, live. You've seen it happen? Yes. You, you went to... Um, I was at a, a launch of a Formula One track in South Africa. I was part of the, the team launching that. Wow. And mm -hmm. he came to, to ride and I didn't know who he was until then. You were impressed. But yes. I didn't, know, I didn't realize what greatness I was watching. There we go. <laughs> they need to bring a, a Formula One to South Africa. Right. That's what I will say. Yeah. They do. 
Very that's good. good one okay, well, that's very useful sport. And uh, Superbets, of course, supports responsible gambling. Strictly no under 18s. Winners know when to stop. The South African Responsible Gambling T- uh, Foundation's toll free counseling hotline is 0800 006 008. I see um, somebody here placed a bet on Cameron Simon over the weekend and uh, lost. Mm. Sorry about that, Audrey. She says, I lost money betting on him. Mm. So, it didn't go well for him. That in, is uh, true. In, no, it didn't. I was, I was looking it up now to actually see what did happen. All right. Well, thank you, James. Thank you, guys. Go and uh, learn some more uh, Irish names. <laughs> Irish, Irish, Irish names of places. <laughs> all right. Very good. Uh, that's all we have for you in the sport this morning, brought to you by Superbets, but we'll have some more for you in the next couple of days. So mm-hmm. stick around for that. Uh, there's still other stories in the news that we've got to get to, but we've got Dr. Hanan coming up in nice. a little while. And... People have been asking, where is MASH? So oh, we're yes. going to be bringing MASH in this oh, morning at 7 o'clock. Yeah, we haven't spoken to him and caught up with him in some time. So we're going to get MASH back in the show and on the air and get him to tell us what's been going on. Um, I'm so glad Ferrari decided to get Hamilton. Uh, JP, I have nothing to add to any of this. I, <laughs> I don't even know like the first thing. So just you know, don't mind me while I go... <laughs> Talk among yourselves about that stuff. Um, it's a very, very strange thing, but we've got to talk about this too. You, you, oh, a fantastic story, by the way, is you guys went to an animal shelter. Yes. Over the weekend, your whole family. Yeah. This is a nice thing. Let's uh, let's get together and celebrate stuff. Yes, absolutely. You know, people stuff doing that's nice true, things. Stuff that really happened, and yeah, you can believe it, right. and it's good. So yeah, we we always tend to adopt um, our animals, and uh, we have a little adopted Jack Russell from Paws, uh, Paws R Us, and uh, we also had a Swiss Shepherd from Woodrock, and unfortunately Maisie, the Swiss Shep- Shepherd, had to be put down earlier this year. So Hutch, the Jack Russell, was lonely. Um, and to the point where, for the first time in his little life, in in his eight years. He followed my dad's car out of the gate when my dad went to the hardware store doing dad things. Mm-hmm. And uh, my dad didn't notice. Someone oh, picked shit. him up on Jan Smuts, how he had jo- uh, dodged cars. I have no idea. But uh, yeah, thank goodness. I was he's- so worried the story was going to end in tears. No, no, th- it ended in happy tears because we knew then that Hutch needed a, l- a little friend. Okay. So off we went to pause. Um, nothing like saying to, because they received the call, the chip is still in their name. So nothing like saying, hi, my dog ran away, but can we get another one? <laughs> well, I suppose no, they're looking for people to adopt. I promise it was the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. But they're looking for people to adopt, so they're not going to go. No, you know, it's, exactly. it's like uh, if, a, if a kid is at an orphanage and um, there's, a, there's a loving, caring family that will look after them. I don't see any reason why people have to stand in the way of that. But, no, exactly. All right. um, so, yeah, we, yes, I am comparing animals and humans. Yes, <laughs> I am. Um, so we were, we were matched with little Susie um, and <laughs> we took Hutch. So now they're, they're Susie and Hutch. Oh, right. <laughs> I know. So cute. She's a little Jack, Jack Russell too, but with huge uh, baggage. So Uh-oh. Susie was found um, at a property where the tenants had left and vacated the property. The rental people went in to clean up and little Susie was there. I don't know. Why, 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 how? how could anyone do that? That's the first thing you think about when moving, oh. right, is your pets. Jesus. I, I, I find there is a whole level of subhuman behavior that occurs around animals. Yeah. Some people are just monsters and they've yeah, said for thousands of years, like if someone is mean to animals, they will eventually be mean to humans. Mm. And you can see it in children. If a child is cruel to animals, they're a psychopath when they grow up. Yeah. And they'll do terrible things to people as well. So there is a link here. The kind of people who would just leave a house and leave a dog. I mean, you're like, what kind of deep, horrible shit are you? Jeez. No, it's really, <laughs> it's really bad. How bad? How, how immoral mm. and, and twisted is your idea of how the world works that you would treat a defenseless, dependent animal like that? 
and then, and you can still go to sleep for however many nights for the rest it's, of your life. It's just evil. You Not know, thinking it, about it. I, I, we'll get back to your story in a second, but there was a big story in, in America that also came out all over the internet last week about this woman who went on vacation and left her kid oh. in a playpen. Oh, jeez. When she came back, surprise, surprise, the kid was dead. And oh. she's now being charged with murder. What the hell? And I just, you know, it, it is unbelievable to me that there are people that evil in the world. And the only thing we can do with them is put them out of their misery. I really think the death penalty should be brought back yeah. for people like that. Yeah. This is a mother. They'll never, they'll never be a mother. If you can't, true mother. If you can't make her care about her kid, you can't make her care about anything. Yeah, hundred percent. So she is just beyond rehabilitation. Absolutely, needs to be put down like mm. a like a wild animal mm -hmm. that is rabid. Yeah, just just get her out of the way. There's nothing society can do to improve a person like that. No, and it's just going to cost us money. Anyway, time. so again, so yeah, to little, go back, little Susie. So Susie's never received love in her life before. Yeah. She doesn't, she's, she's so scared of absolutely everyone and everything that she, she just shakes and wets herself. That's how she's been treated her whole life. Oh boy. So look, got it's, a lot of work. it's a challenge. It's a big challenge. And after we had kind of settled her down, my brother and I got a call to say she's barking, she's unsettled. So we, we worked in shifts last night. To oh just sit with her and hold her and tell her that everything was fine. So we are. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Well, you don't have kids, so the two of you. No, exactly. This is like our little sibling, you know. Wow. But interestingly enough, on the way back, this is all the way past Madrid, early Um, On the way back, we got stuck in traffic on the highway. Yeah. Um, near Marlboro. Yeah. And this was weird because it's a Sunday. What was happening? Well, as we got closer, because we came to a dead stop, as we got closer, you know, the pedestrian bridge over Marlboro was lined up with people. They were all looking over. And I thought, what are we about to see? You're literally driving into something and you think, I don't even know if I want to see this. Then there were cars all piled up on the sides of the roads, people getting out. I thought, is this a protest? Anyway, we finally get through and I had a look and there were five people piled up on top of each other, lying down on the hot tar who'd been arrested. Oh, they had, their hands were cable exciting. tied. Yes. yes. There were loads of cops and they had them down on the floor. These were well-dressed people. Mm. So obviously part of some syndicate, something big. This was big because the community had come out, you know, with Alex being right there, had come out to see these people being arrested. Boy, did the cops put on a show. Well, they loved this. It's they almost worth it. That's like it. that's like the kind of traffic that you're thrilled with the uh, eventual conclusion. You're like, wow, well, look at this. Thing. People were hooting no. and cheering, uh, putting their thumbs they, up. I saw they shot some uh, members of the Rolex gang the other day too in Santa. Well, I wondered if these were Rolex Maybe gang related. type people. Yeah, because they were pretty well dressed. I love when the bad people get shot. Yeah, it's I, the best thing. I mean, I just I know that we uh, we're supposed to say, oh no, but this. You know, there's Hunger rehab and poverty, and there's rehabilitation available to these people. And you, not everyone is a criminal forever. And I just like we're carrying a lot of baggage as society at the moment. There we're, are a lot of we're pissed off now. Yeah, and people have had enough. Like the yeah. level of compassion has just dropped to an all time low. And I'm happy to be one of those people who keeps dropping it lower. I'm like, shoot some criminals, get them out of the way. Yeah. Take this mom who left her kid in the playpen, went on holiday. She needed a vacation. So child died. Take her out. Yeah. We don't have time for this. So needless to say, uh, five hours later when Susie was delivered, the person who brought her said that those people were still lying on the tar. Wow. So five hours later. Whole day, huh? <laughs> Good. In the hot sun. But yes, that was, uh, the, the cops were so proud of themselves. Very good. Uh, keyboard Warrior brings up uh, Douglas Murray, who was here the other day with uh, Jane Dutton. We've got to talk about that, too, because I was in the room when it happened. It was fantastic. He just eviscerated her. Again, mm. like the truth. Because when you have truth on your side, you're unstoppable. Mm. And that's precisely what happened here. And I actually, I'll tell you the story, the behind-the-scenes story there, because 
Um, I sent the clip to Douglas because I was like, yeah, you need to put this out here. Um, they, I don't know if they ever aired it on EWN. I, did, I haven't seen any of it. But um, it went out anyway, and it was superb. So if you haven't seen it, it's really good. It's worth watching. We'll get to all of that and more in a little bit. But here is dun, 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 Dr. Hanan on a Monday morning. Hello, Doc. How are you? Hey, guys. I'm well. Uh, can we acknowledge that uh, summer's over? Yeah, it is. Hey, <laughs> I, I, I'm wearing a T-shirt, and I came in this morning, got out of the car here at the office, and I was like, woof. Okay. <laughs> Little nippy. Um, yeah. It's are we meant to be? Are we meant to be depressed about this, Doc? Very, very. Really? <laughs> so sometimes very. depression is is absolutely called for. Warranted. It's completely, completely justified in this case. Yeah. <laughs> I hate winter, so let's uh, let's all commiserate with each other. All right. So listen, we got a lot to talk about, and and I kind of Leanne, Leanne's just sat here and absorbed a whole lot of my ranting this morning. Poor woman. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I started the show this morning just completely and hopelessly uh, trying to figure out like, why people have given up on the idea of truth. And there, there are a number of reasons for that. And we talked about some of those. I'm not going to go over old territory. But I want to talk about this Kate Middleton saga, not because I give a shit about the royals or any of that stuff. But people are obsessed with the royals. And they're, can, they're obsessed with celebrities and rich people and sports stars and uh, maybe because their own lives are so boring, and we've got to acknowledge that a lot of the people who jump to conspiracy theories on the internet, they don't have a lot going on in their lives. And before, they didn't have an outlet for all of this nonsense. Now, because of social media, they have a place to, I don't know, make a noise, the kind of noise that a mob usually makes when they bang for blood somewhere or they're going to the, the dog fights or whatever peasants used to do in the old days. I don't know what peasants used to do. They used to what? Fight with each other, stab each other with pitchforks. Make uh, chickens fight with each other. Make chickens fight. <laughs> like peasants have always had to find a way to like distract themselves from the misery and boredom of their own lives. And I look at the story with them and I, I see conspiracy theories abounding online. And I'm like, why are people like this? Why are they so disappointing? And I need answers, Doc. Otherwise, I'm going to start like losing it. So the truth is, I I didn't even know the story existed before uh, the producer asked uh, me to come and talk about it. And I think <laughs> so. You had to do some research. Completely, completely. Yeah. And I think, interestingly, Gareth, I think you are 100 percent right. People that have nothing else to focus on that's meaningful in their world, they look for other people to create that meaning and drama in in their lives so they have something to talk about or something to do and something to focus on we naturally mm. are attracted to kind of the loudest person or the biggest drama but we forget very quickly we like the fairy tales we like the ups we like the downs we like the the survival story we like the breakdown story we just like to live uh, vicariously through other people's existence the reason why we like um conspiracy theories is because it's an intellectually lazy way to connect the dots for something quite complex. So okay. the world is a complex thing and the brain doesn't like to kind of do the, the proper homework and you were talking about the truth and figure it out for real. So it'd rather kind of go one plus one equals two or it must be because of X, Y, and Z. Simple, done, shelve it, compartmentalize it and move forward. So it's just an intellectually lazy way to connect the dots to make yourself feel that you understand or that you know or to close the loop, so to speak, and make sense of your world. Okay, that's a great explanation. But I still, I st it's not satisfying me because I'm like, surely for, for, for me and for so many other people who I, I know and like and want to spend time with, it's, it's a better option to go and fill your life up to like go and do things that matter, make other people's lives better. Go out there and make a difference to someone else. Um, make a contribution to the world. Clean up your street. Uh, help your neighbor. Um, take time out to go and spend time with someone old or someone young. Or adopt a dog. Adopt a dog like Leanne did. But these people are instead getting all up in Kate Middleton's face. And, and, and worrying about whether or not a video is fake and whether or not she really has cancer. And it's never going to make any impact on their lives in reality. 
yeah. why are they why are they so loath to do things in their own lives rather than worry about everyone else's yeah get involved in stuff that actually has zero to do with them i agree with you i think that's that's one of the biggest problems that society is filled with these quick fixes that make us feel uh, better about ourselves because they're just pure distractions you know 20 years ago 30 years ago if we wanted to be distracted we'd have to go outside uh, or we'd have to wait how about waiting for our favorite tv show to come mm -hmm. on that it's only going to come on in two hours mm -hmm. these days you know you have an option of a hundred tv shows and you can have it right here right now delivered to you in the car so <laughs> right. you know the, yeah, sure. the access to immediate gratification is so it's so accessible these days compared to you know the the need to be patient i don't know 20 or 30 years ago but what's easier to go to the gym or to turn on the news and start living uh, somebody else's theory or conspiracy theory or life right. what's easier is it easier to kind of get your diet in order or get your household in order and clean your house so to speak in every way your finances mm -hmm. work out a budget uh, start serving you know your kids start being a better spouse start finding your sense of purpose start being kinder to people adopt a dog what's easier doing that or you know living through other people's you know miseries or other people's stories so people mm -hmm. choose the easy way out um, here's a very good question from Goon who says, uh, Doctor, what about the effects stupid people have on intelligent ones in society? The number of stupid people is growing like a virus. Uh, why are we so afraid of truth? Because stupidity is easy? It's a good question. Yeah, I mean, to think, look, life is very nuanced. It's a complex thing and people don't have the, let's call it, um, the capacity or the tenacity to go and seek the real answers. The reason why, I mean, I'm, you saw that uh, Douglas Murray eviscerate the EWN mm. um, reporter. Mm -hmm. He didn't eviscerate her because he's so clever. He's, he's eviscerated her because he's educated. He, know, he knew he was four steps ahead. If you know what he knew, he was just, he was just toying with her because she was playing checkers with somebody that was playing chess. But getting to, let's call it the Douglas Murray kind of level where you're educated, it's about experiencing life and reading and engaging and connecting and connecting dots in very complex ways. And people would rather kind of go, well, I don't want to go down that road. I'd rather go and live and it's laugh at work. other people's, too much work. I'd rather laugh yeah. at other people's lives or, you know, feel happy about people's failures than go and actually study and get educated. Hmm. You know, I mean, you talk about the uh, the chess and checkers games, but someone once said to me, and I think it's it's a it's a valid kind of metaphor that's been used a lot, is you do get those people who are like like pigeons, and you can't play chess with a pigeon because it'll just jump on the board, move all, knock all the pieces <laughs> all over the place, and then take a shit. You you've got to also decide who's worth engaging with, and. Unfortunately, we live in a we live in a time now where everybody feels like they're equal because they have an equal voice online, right? Uh, it doesn't matter if you've got followers or not, but everybody feels that when they say something online, or if they're commenting on someone else's saying something, yeah, an that they should, well, they should be treated like they're some kind of uh, equal. Now, uh, no matter how much I try, I'm never going to be the equal of you know, people who are much more educated much more uh, influential much more powerful than i am and i've accepted that but some people don't accept that they like they, they they're like that pigeon that gets on the board knocks the chess pieces all over shits all over it and then expects applause for that too <laughs> surely with social media we will get to a point somewhere in you know the, the story of humanity maybe it'll take another 50 100 years maybe ai will do it in the space of five years but where we can just shut down that noise, that that stuff I was talking about when I first posed the question, from all these crazies who we should be ignoring. I said to Leanne, you know, before you would have just driven past these people and not paid any attention. But they all think that they have a say now. Will we be able yeah. to ignore them in the future? Are you confident? No. Everybody, one thing that's common to everybody is that we all like to be heard and we like to feel important. And social media plays into that. You know, we get a heart. What does, mm -hmm. it, even, what does a heart even mean? Or what does a thumbs up um, really mean? 
Um, it we think it, it makes us feel special, but people must understand that when you get the heart or the thumbs up, people didn't even look at your work. People even didn't hear what you had to say. They just uh, virtue singling, letting you know that oh, we paid attention to you, but it's all fake. So <laughs> you know we like these things and we strive for these things, but they don't mean much. We think we have an audience. And everybody thinks that because they're saying something online, there's an audience and they feel that they're experts in something. So people think that they're European war strategists and then people were COVID specialists and now mm. people are Middle East specialists. Everybody thinks mm. that, you know, whenever they have an opinion, it really matters because they have all the information and people are there to listen. And the truth is, please believe me, people are not listening to you. People are watching the Kate Milton and they're looking after their kids and their wives in the background and their husbands this and their work that and their boss is screaming mm. at them. People just focus on what's important to them. They don't care about your opinion. If you just realize, I mean, how many times have we said, you know, the, that meme of the earth before your opinion and earth after your opinion? And it's exactly <laughs> the same. Right. People think that your opinion actually moves the earth in some capacity. <laughs> it means nothing. And I want to tell you, right. the reality, the reality, it's very psychologically liberating to know that you're not that important. You're not that important <laughs> yeah, with the right. good and you're not that important with the bad. Just move on with life. Nobody yeah. cares. When you succeed, nobody cares. <laughs> and when you fail, nobody cares. Just move forward. Don't right. think you're that important. Yeah, because there are people who are waking up this morning going, oh, if I don't do this, what will people think of me? And they're not. <laughs> they're not going to think about you. <laughs> Just do do the things you want to do today. Do those brave, brilliant things or do those unimportant, dull, uninteresting things. But don't worry. The rest of it's us are not exactly. going to yeah, Exactly. We're all, Nobody's we're all going, going to carry mention on. your name. Nobody's no. going to mention your name at supper tonight. I promise you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all, these, all these people thinking that someone somewhere is worrying about them. It's, they're really not. It's crazy. <laughs> Um, what what do you what do you tell kids about like how to figure out what's worth spending time on and what isn't? So for it depends obviously at what age, but um, kids need to learn. For me, at least when I see the parents of the kids that come to me, it's the basics. It's manners. It's discipline. Do your hard mm. work. Don't blame anybody. Don't be a victim. If you got fifty five percent for maths, got to work harder. If uh, you don't have any friends, build your social skills. If um, you're struggling with your with your sports, you know, go training more often. Just the basic things that make you an adult. That's what I tell kids. Values, basic uh, values. Okay. It doesn't have to be complicated. I would have right. loved to have got fifty five percent for math. Because <laughs> Leanne was smoking and she was in a gang. She was in a gang at school. All right, uh, Doc. Thank you. This is useful stuff right, to start our week with. Um, if, uh, if you want to send us a question you've got for Dr. Hanan, you can do that. Just drop us an email, uh, contact at cliffcentral.com, and we will pass it on to him. He's always keen to hear what your problems are and ho hopefully help solve them. I just want to throw this in quickly from Slippery Pickle before we uh, go to a break. The general intelligence of the mob is inversely proportional to the size of the mob. As the mob doubles, the average intelligence <laughs> halves. Can't remember the name of the law. That's always true. I think that's yeah, spot that's on. Sure. Yeah, 100%, there we go. 100%. All right. We got lots of other stuff to get to in the next hour. Thank you, Doc. We'll uh, Doc, be I'll calling it quits for this hour. We'll be back in just a moment or two. Stick around, cliffcentral.com. And uh, among other things, Mash pops in mm. to give us an update on where he's been and what he's been up to. So plenty to talk about. Don't go anywhere. This week on the Auto Trader Podcast. These, in your experience. these systems have always been a hit and a miss with me. Sometimes they work yeah really well on mercedes one's pretty good oh, mercedes nice. one's good uh the bmw one is is pretty good even yeah. the the cherry one's pretty good and that extends yeah. obviously to a moda and jku as well the same they're the same system but i spent two weeks in sydney recently in australia and they are like they have cameras everywhere to pick yeah. up whether you are touching your cell phone while driving oh, really okay so i found the siri function on apple carplay driving my brother-in-law's uh, new bmw x1 I found that super, super handy because I would just say, um, I don't want to say it now in case someone's phone goes off. I would <laughs> I would prompt yeah. the voice command yeah. system on Apple yeah. and I would ask it to take us to a specific place or to play a specific song or yeah. to just do something for me. And I found that very useful because I was trying to obviously obey the law and avoid the fines. They find yeah. you for everything in Australia. 
Catch us every Monday at 9 a.m. on YouTube and on autotrader.co.za. Good morning. It is uh, Monday. It's the 25th of March already, almost at the end of the month of March. I thought, uh, I panicked. I was like, oh God, it's already the end of March now. Uh, and I realized, no, we've got another, another weekend. Week. Yes. Uh, we've got the, the Easter weekend coming up. But before you know it, it's going to be April because next, uh, this coming weekend is going to be uh, a long gonna, one. Yeah. So you Friday off and Monday off. It's a good time to have a good time. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and for many, today's payday. That's oh, yes. Thing. Excellent point. Well, you know who's here is uh, he's taken a break out of a very corporate new job. Oh, yes. Come and spend. He looks extremely smart <laughs> this morning. Not that he ever didn't look smart, but he's made a return, a triumphant return to the show because people have been asking, where is Matt? Hi. Hello, <laughs> Matt. Mashiane Sefuti, how Hi. are you? I am good. How are you, Gareth? Nice to see you, man. Nice you to good? see you too. Yeah, I am good. Um, your corporate life has been wild to say yeah. the least are you enjoying it i am enjoying it i am Good. really enjoying it um for those of you who don't know i i actually left cliff central in was it june june july, june, july last year yeah. yes in the middle of winter yeah in the middle of winter <laughs> <laughs> and i went corporate and it's it's been fun um i work for a company that does lots of things um first of all they do packaging actually to start mm. off with it's a very you wouldn't, it's something that you wouldn't you're think enjoying, about. And you're enjoying packaging? Oh, I am wow. enjoying packaging Okay, you really so are. Much. Okay, you're, you're <laughs> a corporate man. I, I had no idea of this about you. I always thought you were the creative type, but there we go. Yeah, actually, I've brought that creative edge to, to a corporate. Nice. And that's mm. what's made it fun is that it's not just numbers and spreadsheets all day. There's quite a bit of creativity yeah. that goes into it. Good. And it's that mixed with a bit of software engineering. So building stuff as well. Amazing. It has been so much fun. I've just... It's very challenging, Leanne. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Mm. Very, very challenging stuff. But yeah. overall, it's been fun. Well, I'm happy <laughs> to see you, man. And it's it's good to catch up because, you know, when people don't hear from uh, someone who is a part of the show every week, yes. and they're like, they what wonder. happened? Yeah. You know, they wonder if you've been like, uh, you know, abducted <laughs> by aliens, uh, whether you've moved to another country. <laughs> But it's nice of you to come in this morning. So you were stuck in some traffic on the way here. No criminals being arrested on the highway. Like no, had over the no, none of Leanne's <laughs> friends I saw this morning. <laughs> but <laughs> so when, if there's anything weird going on, it always happens to yeah, her. Yeah, it's always her around. It's, it's her. very Imagine strange. Imagine feeling how I feel. I'm always, I'm always scared of what I'm going to see around the it's corner. Always, <laughs> oh, like your life is it's like just. Have you written the book yet? I've been telling you. <laughs> What are you waiting for? Uh, Mesh, <laughs> yeah. help me here. He's been trying, trying to get I've me to do that. I told this woman, yeah. she has a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. She can do it. Just write yeah. a book, Leanne. Sure. Just go ahead with it. Yeah. It, it might would, be a bestseller. 
It would you be. Never know. Yeah. It would be so funny because all the things that happen to you are the things other people have to make up. Yeah, you see, exactly. and you all thought thought I was a hypochondriac. The exactly. stuff actually happens. Yeah, very real. Look, yeah. if you want to, Leanne, you and I can join forces and write a book together. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, because I, rem- I do remember people never believed my life as well. No, well, you so. did tell some bullshit stories. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, i got to go to this story quickly, just talking about bullshit stories. So we, we've got a new uh, speaker because the current speaker, listen, You've been following this story at all about Nosiviwe Mapisa Ngakula. What about uh, her? Okay, so she <clears throat> is stepping aside temporarily. Nothing mm-hmm. in politics is ever forever. She's facing corruption allegations. She denies them. In her absence, Lichisa Tsenoli, who is the deputy speaker, is going to take over as acting speaker. The decision has sparked controversy with some political parties arguing it does not comply with parliamentary rules. Parliament maintains the rules permit this kind of leave. The development comes amid ongoing scrutiny of South Africa's government. So apparently she was engaged in corruption. So the Hawks, Mm -hmm. they're still a thing, believe it or not. And the NPA are after her. Bantu Holomisa was in here a week and a half ago Mm -hmm. saying to us he's on her trail. They were Mm -hmm. trying to find her and arrest her. Wow. Now, I mean, listen. I would love them to make an example of someone as important as the speaker. The speaker is essentially the head of the legislative branch of government. Certainly. If if we're going to believe anyone, it it could be her. And if the NPA have been after her for a couple of months and they've been Mm. compiling all the the facts, they they should really make a big show of this. Put Mm. her in jail. Put her in prison. uh, Make her accountable. And if they can prove the allegations, send her to jail. Mm. And it'll send shockwaves. Can you imagine what'll happen with all the other politicians if they see one of their own go to jail? Certainly. They'll yeah. all start behaving themselves. So I think mm. this is terrific. Of course, the problem is that she's not in jail and it is rules for thee, but not for me. Yeah. Mm. Because as we know in this country, politicians get away with everything. And they if, do. If MASH is, for example, caught selling weed on the street corner, he'll go to jail for the yeah. rest of his life. Yeah. What I actually do. Yeah. That's what he does. That's <laughs> the other corporate job. But yeah. If I'm a politician, nothing happens to me. Mm-mm. You know, I could be involved in huge fraud, mm. massive amounts of money. Oh, you'll be welcomed nothing back. Nothing happens. Yeah. So we want to see some accountability here. Mm-hmm. And uh, this woman, she's been flying around the world trying to avoid arrest. Yeah. Uh, and now they must take action. I, I don't I mean, yeah. is there anything else to discuss here? No, not much else to discuss. The only thing is that that just grinds my gears so much. Grinds my nuts, actually, is the fact sure. that right. in this country, you'd think South Africans are stupid looking at South Africa from, oh. from a different perspective. As someone from another country, you think to yourself, how are these people this stupid? How are all these people not in prison? Yeah. And people don't actually realize that we are away. It's just there's nothing we can do about it. And until one person is set an example of, yeah, we correct. can't do much. No, I'm, I'm annoyed as hell Powerless. about this. So. Makes us look, look dumb internationally. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, so here are a couple of things. You, you brought in this one story that I want to talk yeah. about. So you, you, there's a video here. Should I start with the video? Yes. Is that where go you want to go? Go ahead with the video. All right. So here it is. <laughs> Reasons Take a look at this. why I literally get tent off by men. If you don't open the door for me, it's chai. You don't pull out the chair for me, it's chai, baby. If you don't buy me flowers, it's also chai for you, baby. I don't like asking. I do not date men that want me to ask. I date high-value men that know what a woman needs. The moment I tell you I'm doing a coffee date or a breakfast date with a friend, you must. it's either you're going to ask me how much I need or you are literally just going to send the money. If you don't, it's chai. If you are not going to ask me what I want for a monthly allowance or you're just not going to tell me that this is how much I'm going to give you for a monthly allowance, it's chai, baby. If you are not going to buy me the Rolls Royce that I want, it's also chai. Because whomst are you? Shut up. What is is chai? You are going to book those trips. Chai means over. (laughs) Uh, And I literally do not care if we just met. You're not getting the coochie. This is one of the reasons why I always say to the girlies, close your legs, 
Oh Open God. your mind, use your mind, get the bag and be smart and land a man that is your man. That is the man that you're going to open your legs for, not just anybody. Hmm? Jesus. Wow. First of all, <laughs> who is that? Who's this moron? Uh, her name is Mrs. White. Okay. That's, that's actually what she calls herself. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, all right, where do we start with this? Um, why did this get your attention? This got my attention because it's been trending um, for the past two weeks. So this girl posted this video and she was basically like, oh, it's chai, it's chai and no. baby, it's chai. First of all, baby, it's chai is my new favorite line. It's, uh, even at work, I'm like, oh, baby, it's chai. I like that. I might, I might start using it too. Uh, <laughs> so it's chai. Chai means apparently not happening. Okay. So it's chai. It's not happening. All right. Mm. And she... I love having MASH on the show. I would never have, no, known, would have known what that. this was about. <laughs> so she's basically saying that she's looking for these high value men. Yes. They got to do everything for her. They mm -hmm. must also pay her a monthly allowance just to yeah. be, just to be her. And buy, buy her, her a Rolls, Rolls Royce. Royce. And then yes. she will open her legs. And mm -hmm. so she's a prostitute. She is a prostitute. She even has an OnlyFans, eh? Of course. Yeah. Of course. So... It makes sense. <laughs> but, but why would a high value man want such a low value woman? Apparently, these, these women in particular think that these high value men go after them to be with them, to be in well, relationships. Why, why does she them? think she's so valuable? I mean, she's. She's mm -hmm. not unattractive. Okay, she's, she's not. She's a good-looking yeah. woman, but she's mm -hmm. not like supermodel hot. Yeah. The she's only like a thing, max, maximum six out of ten. Yeah. The only thing she has to offer, and this is something that we see quite often now, especially with people coming out of varsity, people like struggling to find jobs, mm -hmm. is that these people they feel like they have no actual value. So they end up reducing themselves to just their bums sex. and their sex. sex. Mm. That's all they end up reducing okay. themselves to. And it's a very large population of our country that's like that thinks like this. Fine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not going, I have no problem with her being a hoe. I, mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, really, and I, I don't mean this yeah. in some judgmental way. You, you know, there are a lot of people climbing in on the comments saying how terrible she is. Uh, there are men who do want. Mm -hmm. A transactional kind of relationship, Certainly. which is why prostitution has always been the first and foremost industry yes. in the world. It was the first job. Very, that, very popular. Very popular very job. Popular. And mm -hmm. this is a tough economy. And if there's some women who are prepared to put out for money, yeah, great. Mm -hmm. This woman mm -hmm. at least knows what she's about. So yeah. we can sit here and go, oh, she's terrible. She's got no yeah. morals. And she, she's a, she's a low-value woman, but there are men who want that. What is she Certainly. giving to society? She's giving coochie. She's she giving told coochie. You. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Uh, That's it's not it. a lot to offer. I actually went with her for the first few seconds. I like the fact that she said she wants a man who knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. That that I agree with. That that would be fantastic. Instead of training a man for a change, it'd be nice to have, get a trained one. Certainly. Um, but then, no, then it just gets way out of hand. <laughs> You know, you uh, don't people get nervous about the fact that they also have to contribute to a relationship and be something of value? Like, it's a big thing being in a, in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of responsibility. She wants you're none dig, of you're it. You're digging very deep yeah. here. I'm, I'm just like still trying to. So, Bastsana has helped me here. Chai is as in Chaile. Yeah. Apparently, that's chayile. where it comes from. I, yeah. I know Chaile. So, I would have, oh. yeah, that would have made sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah, I get. I, I like that. Mm. Okay, cool. Mm. So now at least I have an explanation from Bastsana. So Carl says I like her voice, her views, and her use of the word chai. How do I contact her? <laughs> I'll order the Rolls Royce today. <laughs> See, there's yeah. going to be a guy who wants that. Also, I do think she's aiming at a particular target market Certainly. here. Mm. There are a lot of guys who have no game at all. Yeah, they may have made some money. Mm -hmm. Their only thing is money. Her mm. only thing is the coochie. Mm. Yeah. She wants the money. They want the they want coochie. The coochie. Mm -hmm. It's a good yeah. deal. It's a transaction. It I, is. I, I have no, I really don't. I wouldn't want this to be my daughter or mm -hmm. my sister or a, a woman I, I care about in my life. But I'm not, I'm not going to tell her how to live her life. Mm. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I really can't. Uh, th there's mm. no reason for me to pile on with her. Yeah. She's yeah. chosen to be like this. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm not going to go out of my way to sit and talk to her. Yes. I can see that that's not what she's about. 
Mm-hmm. She's not my kind yeah. of girl. I'm yeah. watching uh, Below Deck again, one of you the love new that seasons. Show. Yeah. Yo. And just these these wealthy people who get onto these boats, a lot of it has to do with the way you look, how sure. much money you've got. Of course. And there are couples where she's arm candy and that's oh. what she wants to be. And, oh, please. And he's fine with it. On a yacht. Yeah. Like you could always tell, right? There's mm. this beautiful young woman. She's like 20, 30 years younger than the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He mm-hmm. looks immaculate. She's tan. She's magnificent. She's got great hair and skin. Yes. And he's this gross, saggy, <laughs> gray haired, gray haired, with a gold dark cane. rings under his eyes. He's <laughs> gross, hairy back. And you think, I know what's going on here. There's nothing wrong with that. No, he's happy. She's happy. And just yeah. because, just because they're extremely rich and on a yacht, doesn't mean that Mrs. White is worse. She's serving a target market. So, She's serving a target market. Again, yeah. like I like that when you bring this stuff, uh, Mash. I've missed this with you because <laughs> it makes makes me think. You know, in a world of complicated stuff, this is not a complicated one. Yeah, there's a whole other side of life that is so simple. It's all about the Rolls Royce and the coochie. Right, that simple. She gets it. If only life could be that simple. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. Now, oh. now I wouldn't want to sit but, and ask her what she thinks of Nosiviwe Mapisang Nakula, <laughs> but that's not her point. Or have that's a shoulder to cry on, or someone who cares about how your day was. No, and, yeah. and, and I'll tell you what: if if you're paying her that monthly allowance and you've had a tough day at work, mm-hmm. you get home. <laughs> Yeah, it's not. She chai. knows what it's about, eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she knows. She's like, "Hey, baby, I'm ready for you. I'm prepared. I've uh, I've got everything ready for us. Let's go. I'll sort out your stress." The thing is, she's gonna she's gonna want more and more and more and more. That's she's not gonna be happy after just the rolls. Because the thing is, somebody who doesn't work for what they have doesn't value what they but have. She is working. Don't you say that? Uh, okay, <laughs> come on, you two. That's not fair. She's probably gonna work really hard. Oh, she works harder mm. than all of us, Leanne. And. Yeah. Most guys, uh, listen, again, this is not complicated. Most guys in the world yeah. are actually only getting rich and being successful and making something of themselves so that they can land a woman that they're really attracted to. Mm. 100%. Right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. are they any worse? They just have to no. go a lot longer and harder yeah. and keep working at it and trying to make money and competing with other men and other mm-hmm. women in business. It's a hard slog. And when they make that cash, if they want to spend it on a uh, prostitute, that's what they worked for. Yeah. I actually saw, there's a girl who posted a selfie of herself on Twitter. And guys were quoting this, um, this, this, this tweet saying that, um, you make me want to work harder mm. in life. You wait, make go. me want better for myself. And I, I started commenting on these two. I was like, well, you should make yourself want yeah. more in life. It's that's, not... that's until a new shiny object comes along. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, she will so, be replaced. Yes. And she yes. knows that too. So she's got to make hay while the sun shines. Mm-hmm. She's got to get the roles. She's got to get the monthly allowance. Yeah. Because when he cuts her loose because he finds a younger, better model, mm-hmm. she's got to have something to show for it. These hoes are like iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, you got something else here you wanted to bring to us. Look at this. Yes. Um, I was, oh. New recipe for drink. Putting ice in a glass. Okay, what do we got going on here? Leanne, you're always interested in yes. a new kind of drink. Well, I like this glass. It's, it's a new trend where it mm-hmm. kind of looks like a can of something. It's a lot of ice, okay. Sure. I have one of those glasses. They're so nice. Mm. We're pouring some whiskey in there Ooh. now. Good whiskey. Not Ooh. bad. Okay. Select reserve. Ooh. Very good. Mm-hmm. Expansive. All right. So she pours mm-hmm. a little bit of... Uh, it's a oh, sheet. I can't watch it's it so sheet. early in the morning, though. Oh, it's a lot of whiskey. Oh. Isn't this your morning tea? <laughs> That's like a, that's more than a shot. Yeah, that's, so that's maybe that's two, a double. It's yeah. a double. Okay. Oh. And, then we, and then we take a, what, a Savannah cider. Here, cider. Yeah. And we crack that I mean, open. the cider on its, this cider on its own is quite a, Ooh, a rush. Yeah. All right. And then she's adding the cider to the whiskey. Okay. So in that glass is ice, whiskey, and cider. Okay. Strong I'm sure combo. She, I'm sure she liked something else. Do you not think? Oh, doesn't seem like there's room. No. That's it. Got a glass straw in there. Gives it a bit of a whiz. Nice and foamy. That is the whole recipe. 
Okay, so Ooh. so I got to ask a couple of things because mm -hmm. I I don't watch a lot of these videos, so yeah. I find it extremely. I have to be a, a, a in a very patient mood to watch yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. I I can't. You know those videos that come up where they someone fixes a table or yeah. You know, I, I like those videos, but I just skip right to the end to okay. see what it looks like yeah. once it's done. Mm. And then if I'm interested in how they got there, I'll go back. Then you'll watch. go back. Yeah. But, but I'm an instant gratification guy. So when I see a video like this, I don't need to see her. She took like 30 seconds to add mm -hmm. the ice. That could be edited down to a she, second. She really could have. But she was just savoring the moment so much and she wanted us to savor it as well. So um, th th apparently that is, a, that is a new drink to start off That's with. That's a lot. Because like I said, one of those on its own without whiskey in it is enough mm -hmm. to, I mean, people know <laughs> yeah. that if you want to get buzzed, you have that drink. And I actually saw some comments. I actually pulled this down from Twitter. I didn't see it on TikTok. But the comments were that um, they were basically commenting on, on the state of our youth and saying that, look, um, no wonder why our youth is always tired. No wonder why they have puza faces. Mm. Mm. And they, they were wondering why they have December fatigue <laughs> in March. <Puza> face. <laughs> yeah. It's because we... Not that was me. a newspaper headline. That's what started us on that. I remember, yeah. <laughs> no, I think it was the sun. And they, they we said, made look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. That is why 18-year-olds are looking 33 nowadays. It's because this is the lifestyle they're living. They, I, I, was, I was here thinking that the youth had changed. They were all about health and gym and wheatgrass mm. and... Puzza face. But, <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> it's just a big puts of face. So, all right. Uh, are you? Do you worry about this? Because you got I good do. skin. You look young. I do worry about I mean, you this look, quite you look a lot. Very, you're, you're, you're not getting older. You haven't changed at all in the, yeah. in the, in the <laughs> just under a year that we haven't seen you. My skin is glowing. It's actually even <laughs> you, tightening up a bit. But so. you, you put that occasionally. I do occasionally oh, yeah. and socially only. So where's the line, Mesh? Because if you're going to be drinking like this... Mm -hmm. Especially in the week. Yeah. That's yep. going to take yeah. its toll. It's going to take its toll that. very quickly. Mm. And I think as much as most of the, the young people nowadays are all about self-care and taking care mm. of themselves, there's quite a fine line between those people and the people who are still puzzering and going out every single weekend, my For life sure. last year. For sure. Um, there's still quite a difference between those two people. And those two people can also be the same person. That's one thing that people often forget. And... As a result, um, as much as there's no fine line between the two, it is, I, I, guess, so, I guess it gets more and more complicated. Listen, um, there's so many, <clears throat> so many comments here from our, mm. our Puza Face listeners. Oh. Uh, JP says, good use of expensive whiskey. Mm, I, um, is it expensive? I would I prefer it on the ice, on ice, on the rice. Admin says, add a piece of toast, it's a wholesome <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> See what I mean? Our listeners are Puza Faces. <laughs> What a waste of a good blended whiskey. That's yeah. the opposite opinion to JP's. Uh, every man loves a Dickens cider. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Well, <laughs> a Dickens cider. <laughs> yeah, it should be every woman. But uh, yeah. I'd add pineapple juice, says Ruth. Make it a real cocktail. Okay. Was, uh, <laughs> I, I agree with Ruth. Island there. vibes. Uh, Azalea says this thing that you're talking about is called social jet lag. Mm, yes. A hangover. Puzz a face. Yes. Uh, so true. This is exactly the conversation I was having with my friend, says Deshni. South African culture glamorizes imbibing over actually working towards goals, even that Rolls Royce. Mm. So mm. she's kind of, Deshni is linking both the stories here. Man. Deshni's oh, wow. clever. <laughs> Deshni's the is, girl. This is amateur hour. Gin is a weekday morning drink, says Slippery Pickle. <laughs> Weekday morning. Yo, 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 yo. If your yo. day is starting off like that, guys. Uh... That is worrying. Do you know, I always feel like the most depressing place in the world. There are two of them. Okay. The one is a casino mm. on a Monday morning, Oof. like nine o'clock. If yeah, you see yes. people sitting in a casino on a Monday morning, mm. nine o'clock, those people are the most miserable people that mm. are still alive that you will encounter. Huh. They're just, they're too miserable even to kill themselves. Hey, boo. Okay. Oh That's how I feel about that. I'm, I may be wrong. Maybe they're brilliant gamblers. Who knows? <laughs> I went to the casino on a Monday morning. Yes, sis. Yes. Um, so, Were so you I, at your lowest? No, I was not at my lowest. Um, I was with... <laughs> you mean it was lower? <laughs> and, and just by the way, the other group are the ones who go to a liquor store 
to wait for it to open yeah. at nine or whatever. I, yeah, I yeah. Know. yeah. We we had People those little that? villagers in villagers in the village of McGregor. Um, they would pull themselves up from the pavement at nine to go into the bottle store. They wait and they wait in the queue before the place even opens. Mm. And they would buy these like five liter sunflower oil containers with what looked like oil, the yellow oil, but, but it, it was it's just bad wine. <clears throat> Oh, that is horrible. So do you think, why did you end up in the casino on I, Monday morning? So I actually got a timeshare in Sun City. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> Okay, that makes more sense. Then. All right, but and, it was like part of a holiday. Yeah, it was part of oh, a holiday. So on a Monday morning, um, just before we were about to um, leave to go somewhere, um, we decided, let's just pop by the casino quickly and go vibe around and see what's happening there. And it was my first time gambling. I've never ah. gambled before in my life. I've actually never been in a casino. It was my first time. Hmm. Oh. And my partner um, uh, batched me. My partner gave me 100 bucks. Mm. I was like, yeah, go play some games. Winner. Basically like uh, <laughs> like Mrs. White yes. gets her allowance. You <laughs> got I get my it. allowance as well. It's 100 rand to play allowance. games. Yes, nice. So I was very proud. I was like, oh, oh, look good. at me. <laughs> From 100 rand to and Rolls Royce, I'm coming. Did you win? I only used 40 rand of that 100 rand at, mm. at the Sun City Casino. Mm. I left there with 1.6. Yes. 1,600, not 1. 1.6 million. Go gambling 1,600 1, rand. Fantastic. And, and you, you, and you and managed you had, to stop. And you had the original 60 as well. I was at the original 60. Smash, you're good. Yeah. I, were, I only played the roulette. And how I played it, um, oh, I don't want to be giving gamblers advice. No, but go on. I no. might just Why win on something. If you win based on my advice, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, basically, they have that screen over there where you can see what numbers have been yeah, played what's previously. Already happened, yeah. And I just looked at those numbers and I just, I just did the process of elimination where I was like, okay, what numbers have not been played oh, over all the turns? Okay. And what numbers are occurring most frequently? And I just decided, okay, I want 22 because 21's been played once or twice and all the other numbers and have so been you played won. before. Yeah. Bloody fantastic. Mm. All right, well, that's you know all what? it took. Mate, that's not depressing. Yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> but I usually, uh, I get a very ugly vibe because we used to film idols at oh, uh, yes. one of the casinos. One, one of the seasons was in a, uh, we'd wake up early and go and start filming. Yes. And you'd walk through the, and you'd see these people. On like a weekday morning, and you'd think, and old people, hey, mm. uh, I've been doing it their whole lives. Uh, oh my word! Yeah, I, d right, I dated someone who would get his weekly. I mean, his father would get his weekly wages mm -hmm. in a brown envelope, which he would put in his shirt pocket, mm. and mm -hmm. we would drive straight to Carnival City or wherever. Jeez, and that's, that's from mm. from week to week. That's how he lived. Mm. Oh, brother. And then we, on the way home, we'd mm. stop by the horse betting place. Oh, right. The horse on the way home. Yeah. yeah. From the casino. Yeah. It's a big game. Eh? Liam, that's very worrying. People like that stuff. Brother, oh, that's mm. very concerning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's chai. That's yeah. chai. <laughs> that's a new word this morning, everybody. Uh, people are saying that you, uh, you're like the South African Rain Man. Huge reaction says you're the South African Rain Man. Mash should try his luck on super bets. Yeah, well, you know. I should. You, you know you call him huge reaction, but you know if you read it properly, what does it say? Huge reaction. Yes. I know. Okay. But I'm, I, I, I'm doing this just to irritate. Okay. That went right yeah. over my head. Huge <laughs> reaction. Very good. No, I know. I'm glad you got, got, got you. All right. So, uh, Carl says, Gareth, you're wrong. Plenty of those gamblers kill themselves. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what uh, Marcus Yuster did. Oh, too soon? Geez. Too soon? No, not too right. soon. All right, cool. mm -mm. Yeah, I, I had to attend a function at a casino, like Monte Casino or something. Yeah, it was Monte. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what function it was, but anyway. Um, and I left, ended up leaving my bank card at one of the restaurants by mistake. So I had to collect it the, the next day. Mm. Problem is, I didn't have cash on me, so I couldn't pay. You know, you've got to pay for parking up, right, up front. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't have the 10 rand or 20 oh, rand no. in cash, and I didn't have my card. Oh, Leanne. So I eventually had to beg. I had to beg them if I could please come in. They said, oh, well, we'll take you to the security office. I had to promise them that I had money on my card that I could. Because the gamblers, that's yes. why they charge you up front, because mm. the gamblers 
never have money to pay for their parking afterwards. So I, f- I felt like a terrible person and that, that they weren't believing me. It was horrible. Ugh. You felt like a dirty That gambler. was like on a Monday no, morning. No, no. Mm. So, okay, uh, there's one other thing that's as terrible as that. Ever been to a party, a really amazing party the night before, it, either at a club or at a restaurant or even at someone's house, mm. and then seen what it looks like the next morning before it's been cleaned up. Oh, dear. Oh, no. With the glass bottles everywhere. Are people everywhere. still lying around? Well, I don't, it doesn't <laughs> matter. I mean, like probably at some house parties, yes. But, yeah. But if you go to like a, a nightclub in the morning, very bad, oh, yeah. very bad scene, you know. Like yeah. I sometimes have left my headphones or whatever there if I was DJing. Oh, yes. Go in there and you're like, oh, this looks… T-. And the lights Ooh. are on. Because at yeah. night, the lights are off. There's, there's, they've got some mood yeah. lighting going Everybody yeah. looks sexy right. and prim and proper. When you, see how, when you see how gross the carpets are in the oh. full light of the next morning. Oh. And the smell changes too. Mm. Oh my word. So those are the three, in my opinion, most depressing possible places you could find yourself. Mm. Extremely depressing. You want to add any to that for yeah. a Monday morning? The, the, Just so that people who are in their car, at their office, feeling a little sorry for themselves, they don't mm-hmm. have to feel sorry for themselves. Yeah, feel, feel good places. about yourself if you didn't wake right. up hangover. That feeling where you can't even swallow because your throat's so dry. Right. <laughs> That's the worst. And even one worse than that, my brother knew that I'd had a, a hectic night, night out. And like any younger sibling who teases an older one, mm. doused the corner of my pillow in, in whiskey. Oh, <laughs> Hey, boo. Uh, oh. Waking up like that oh. was just horrible. That is wild. Yes. Yeah, he can be cool sometimes. Oh, listen, <laughs> uh, this is a good one. This is kind of linked to this. Is Leanne found a story about this terrible new disease called hot tub lung. Ooh, Ooh. yeah. Okay. That sounds so, lovely. Yeah, it sounds gross, huh? So I love the picture that she found of these two <laughs> terrible looking people in a hot tub together. But apparently, <laughs> it's a real condition. Yes. Is it? And it made me think of… Mash, you would need to listen to this because you got a lot of hot tub parties. It, it made me think of like this, like swingers party. He's not denying it. Just notice. He's not denying it. Yeah, it's the truth. I mean, the, <laughs> the swingers parties that I've seen had all had hot tubs. Mm. And you just, you wonder what's going on in there. But um, yes, it's a thing. Um, you, you, firstly, the temperatures are warm, so it's growing this uh, bacteria. Oh my god! Um, this is, by the way, why I, I haven't ever built one in my. I, I've got a swimming pool, but I refuse to have a hot jacuzzi. Tub. I refuse to have it because it's very unhygienic. So it's it? it's mycobacteria. Yeah. It's called. Oh my and god! From the same family that causes TB. Ooh. Chlorine doesn't kill it. So even if your hot tub smells all chloriney. Mm-hmm. Not really. And then obviously with the vapor, the heat, the steam and the steam. bubbles, mm-hmm. yeah. you're inhaling all of that. And people do get something called hot tub lung. Not as serious <laughs> as TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just going <laughs> to imagine getting to the office uh, today. And someone's <laughs> like coughing a lot. You're like, shame. Do you have the flu? No, it's just a bit of Mm. <laughs> oh my word. So it actually shows up on the x-ray is quite alarming, these these like mold patches in, no. your, in your lungs. Is it fungus? Mold well, it patches. Kind of, yeah. Well, myco, myco meaning, I mean, it, it, it's got to do with, with uh, fungus. Oh, there we, oh. there we go. These are, these are waterborne bugs, not only in hot tubs, yeah. but in... Um, saunas and all of these sort of steamy places, mm. including Legionella, which is the bacteria that can cause uh, Legionnaire's disease. Oh, that sounds mm. horrific. So, but as it turns out. Mm. See, we need Leanne around these to help us hot figure tubs out these. are actually, huh. the, the, the only types of people who would be affected by hot tub lung are people who are immunocompromised. Oh, so, but that's HIV people. Could be. I mean, generally, we're going to be okay. AIDS, if you've got the AIDS yeah. <laughs> and you get into the hot tub, you could be you susceptible. Could, yeah, if you got the AIDS. What yeah. about TB? Doesn't TB also leave your lungs compromised? Just Absolutely. your lungs, though. Yeah. Still. No, I wouldn't want to try Same this. Same family. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. want to, Listen, let's try to avoid hot tub lung in general. <laughs> in general. <laughs> but if you have so, the TB or the AIDS. <laughs> then don't. Stay away from <laughs> because the Because otherwise, the, the benefits actually outweigh the risk. What? Yes. There are oh. benefits? Mm-hmm. What, like getting pregnant? The heat, this kind of heat, <laughs> without even trying, <laughs> uh, this kind of heat therapy 
causes heat shock proteins to de develop in your body. They increase your metabolism. They can help mm. your body's sensitivity to insulin. Um, they act as these natural treatments for diabetes and obesity, mm. and apparently are less risky than these ice baths that people are having or cold water immersion. Tell Ben that. Because yeah. there, the, the risk is heart attack and also drowning. They found a lot of people drowning. Well, you get in. in the bathtub. I don't know how. Like, how are you falling asleep? Well, maybe you have the heart attack and then you uh, slip below perhaps. the water. Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say perhaps? Perhaps. Listen, <laughs> the, mm, I, I, I'm very suspicious of the, uh, the hot tub culture. Mm. Mm. People are usually not getting up too much good in there, right? Or, or too much good. You always assume, always assume mm -hmm. it's a jacuzzi or a hot tub. Oh, I remember. It's going down. Yeah. Yeah. Shit's going under the water, under those bubbles. Oh, there yeah. are hands moving oh. around. There oh. are... I used to have a fondly, <laughs> a fondly friend. A fondly Ooh. friend? Yes. Tell us about your fondly friend. Here's another story for your book. Same so me. we were all <laughs> um, partners. We were all, we all this had is a, swing a boyfriend. Of, or this, no, no. This you is were just, all partners at how? No, I mean, like. They I, were, none of them were single. We were all oh. had boyfriends or girlfriends. She has a terrible way of explaining Ooh. this because she's had so many sexual liaisons. <laughs> she, <you know. laughs> okay, sexual liaisons. <laughs> no, so it was four of us couples that went on a holiday. Yes. And we didn't know, but when one of the guys got drunk and in the jacuzzi, he got a bit handsy. Oh. So I felt something happening, but like right in there. Wow, Leanne. And you didn't get huh. up. You didn't get up and scream like most girls would. I thought it was my partner and I looked at him in the face and you could see it wasn't him. He was just But Leanne, at that point you didn't say anything? I was a little bit embarrassed and shocked. I thought and I also thought maybe it was an accident. <laughs> Okay. And uh, what, an accident that his hand just slipped inside you? Or was it his foot? I can't remember. My God, uh, Mash. Yeah, look at Mash's face. That is exactly the face. So anyway, that... got out. Holy And shit. then one of the other girls came up to me and said, did you feel anything strange going on in there? And, and we knew exactly who it was. So it had happened <laughs> to two of us. A what? handsy drunk friend. So he, he, we've got, he did it with two of you who were not his partner. And his was partner his partner was partner there. Day. Yes. Yeah, was so she wait. in on it? No, definitely not. She was <laughs> a Poor woman. very They're jealous just, type. So we just, had to keep quiet. You're just fingering everyone in the jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And you guys wow. just sat there and took it. <laughs> you're like, oh, okay, guess I'm just going to sit here and... <laughs> Hey, this is a good point. Uh, Rebellious Ruth reminds us Matthew Perry was found in his hot tub. Remember? Yeah, he was. Yes. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. It's uh, this is uh, Leanne. These things that have happened to you. Uh, I once went to a music festival, says Mapelo, where mm. they didn't allow drinks, including water, in, so you couldn't drink. Then they mm. ran out of the expensive water that they were selling. I almost died from hiccups. That this should be a, illegal. This, this is confusing. Yeah, shouldn't be allowed. Actually, uh, it sounds to me like you know the, the hot tub just allows it allows it's the a, worst a breeding ground. Yeah, it allows it but bad behavior. Forget about the bacteria. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a breeding ground for bad behavior. Yeah, yeah. it's a bad <laughs> behavior thing. Listen, I, I I get why it would be, especially if it's winter. Yes. Be a more welcome thing than a swimming Ooh, pool. Sign me up in winter. See? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Finger me all day. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, well, that's gonna be the that's gonna be in the, in the show notes. Unreal. Uh, but there's actually one more thing I wanted to discuss. Um, that's been what very worrying. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Um, have you guys heard of frogging? P A, it's P H R O double G I N G, no, frogging. I've heard of frapping and all the other PH yeah, I sounds. Do, I do not know what this is, but I'm fascinated. Considering Ooh. where all our other conversations have gone this morning, this can only be filthy. What about uh, frogging? It's, it's more disturbing and worrying rather than what is filthy. This? So, frogging is when someone secretly lives in another person's home without Ooh. their knowledge, often in an unseen area like a crawl space or wall. The word comes from the idea of a frogger leaping from one place place to another place like a frog froggers oh, may have nowhere God. else to live and may quietly observe the occupants of the home the vic um, victims may feel like someone is watching them sleep 
or find things like their hairbrushes or tools misplaced or food oh. left out. Froggers oh. may also eat the homeowner's food and move or steal their positions. Oh. So That's I saw a video once. Freaky. Yeah, with a PH. I saw mm-hmm. one a video once where somebody said in the in the caption, I have a feeling someone's living in my house because <gasps> food disappears, all of this. Mm-hmm. So they set up a camera. And out of this crawl space, like above the kitchen cupboards, came this person who, like a, like a spider, came out oh of the crawl space. Oh, my God, this is horrible. Yeah. Um, and so, so, so quietly, like held onto the walls or like a frog would, I suppose, and then pulled his legs out onto the kitchen counter, came down, opened up the fridge and started eating stuff and went back into his crawl space. I have no idea we are talking about whether you could believe things or not. Whether this was staged, but it looked freaking creepy, man. This happened. Just the way you described it now made me Ugh, very I can't even keep my legs under the table. Listen, this oh, is this is a this is a real problem. If this is happening, Mash, do we know that this is a US thing or is it happening here as well? It's just a US thing based off of my research. Look, okay, when the economy is tough, people have to find there are a lot of homeless people. Yeah. people <laughs> <you're>, <laughs> you've got to find a place to live. <laughs> it's, it's a hard world out there. But if you live in the attic mm. or in the basement and no one knows that you live. The people who own the house don't know that you're there. Mm. And you get away with this. There's that. Like, kind of kudos to you. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's. That is. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. But if the people They're are using so, your toothbrush. If the ha! people, if the people, who, yeah, if the people who live there are so like, unobservant mm. that they don't notice for a couple yeah. of days that there's some other living person in their house. The way you describe that guy coming out of the Crawl ceiling space. like a, like a like a spider. Yeah, there's that, and then also mm. a lot in America, what happens a lot in America is you've got these old apartments like in New York, Manhattan, yes. and that sort of thing. And there was this one a few months back or maybe even a year mm-hmm. where she she felt a breeze coming from the back of her every time she was in the bathroom she felt oh a breeze my god i don't know if you remember she eventually realized it was coming from behind the mirror oh my god she removed the mirror and there is an entire like abandoned apartment in between the walls and she was convinced someone was living in there <laughs> Oh, that, that makes me so uncomfortable. Well, I have a quick story for you guys. Um, a, a, a frogging story. Um, <laughs> this actually happened. Um, this is the stomach churning case of Daniel Laplante. Um, Laplante is spelled L A P L A N T E. I don't know. Okay. If the yeah, e I think that's end. right. Laplante. La, La La no, Laplante. Laplante. <laughs> Go on. Laplante. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Tina Bowen was convinced that the spirit of a deceased mother was speaking to her through the walls of her home in Pepperell, Miss. M- Massachusetts. Okay. For weeks, the teenager received cryptic messages scribbled onto the walls in condiments Ooh. like catch- like ketchup. Oh. Items mysteriously rearranged themselves around the house. Full bottles of alcohol suddenly became empty. Then on December 8, 1986, Bowen and her father returned home to find a bone-chilling sight. A stranger in one of their closets with a painted face, a Native American-style jacket, a ninja mask, and a hatchet in hand. He's like, <laughs> good lord. That escalated fast. He forced the Bowens into a bedroom before running off into another part of the home. Tina used the opportunity to escape and call the police. Authorities arrived and found that the stranger was a teenager named Daniel Laplante. Oh my God. Whom Tina had briefly dated. Oh, the next. And he had been living in the family's crawl space for several weeks, taunting them for a while. So he basically tricked this family into thinking that, because Tina actually at some point um, tried to reach out to her mother. I was like praying and you know her mother had recently deceased this is terrible and he was knocking on the walls Mm-mm. i'm not gonna break a go go too much in today it's quite a long story but he was knocking on doors and he was like whispering like but imagine you yeah. think you were going crazy yeah you think you're okay, talking so, to your mother uh, there, there are two things here so mm-hmm. first of all if you lived in a huge big house mm-hmm. yeah with like 14 and, rooms yeah and and you yeah. didn't know you know like there was a bedroom in the attic story that no one really went to. Yeah. And if this frogger, 
I love that that they've got a they've got a word to describe this now. Mm-hmm. If this person was very neat and tidy, and they were able to like cover their tracks, mm. yeah, maybe even bought brought their own food, you might get away mm-hmm. with it for a few weeks, maximum. Yeah, like yeah. at the huge house, you know, many many rooms. Most of them you don't use. Yeah. You don't even go and clean those rooms. They don't necessarily have furniture in them. They yeah. kind of maybe the door's been bolted storage. or what, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. Maybe at the back of a storage area, someone could live. Ooh. But the chances of that, like who has extra rooms in there? Who has so many rooms? Very rich people, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. The other thing is what's going on in the US at the moment. So this is mm-hmm. a story I heard also over the weekend about squatting. They've got a big problem in America at the moment. The oh. laws are such that if someone moves into your house, let's say you agree to lease them the place for three months. Yes. Month three comes, passes by. Month four, they're still there. It's very, very hard to get rid of these people. Yeah. I will. The law's on their side. In yeah. this country too, actually. Yeah. And so if you're a property owner, you just have to accept that these squatters are going I'm to live going there. Anyway. They're not going anywhere. Oh, I you can't get it. rid of them. Hmm. If they're there for 30 days or more, they're basically entitled to stay. Yeah, yeah. it's a big, big problem. Guys, I'm sorry, but it's happened to me. It's happening right now. You've got Hibble. a squatter? I, two years ago, put my house on the market. I recall. I was asked to vacate the premises. Could he have occupational um, rent, mm-hmm. rental? Uh, he agreed to pay me per month, etc. Moved in with the intention of purchasing the property within a month's time. Mm-hmm. It's been two years. He's still there. And not paying. He's paying. Oh. He's an eviction attorney. Oh, my God. So he's Yo. using the law to his advantage. The premises are being used for his law firm. Oh, my God. And he has delayed the purchase of this house in every way that he can, whether it's a missing piece of paperwork. Because once you've submitted bank statements that are not to be older than three months, he uses that loophole um, like, oops, sorry, I submitted the wrong bank statements. Sure. We are now at the at the point where, um, wow. yeah, the banks are on my back. It's been an absolute nightmare. I had to go back there recently. And um, I think I mentioned it. The grass is waist high. Trees have fallen down, breaking the electric fence. The electric fence fencing is hanging onto the floor. <sighs> um yeah, it's just not great, I'm guys. telling you, you need a book. Is he still <laughs> living there? Yeah, he's still there. He's still operating. Uh, how is he living? He's not living there. He lives in a different suburb. These are his offices. Oh. But he's not dear. looking after the place at all. Uh, he's uh, been, I mean, it's okay, hmm. but it's not, I mean, a car is parked outside my bedroom where there used to be a garden and a Pride of India tree, you know. The, um, the, a big server has been... Um, Drilled into the the wooden ceiling in the dining room. Wow. (laughs) His reception area is my lounge. And there are these big um, perspex things with bolts through them in in the walls with the company name on it. Wow. It happens, guys. Leanne. Uh, You should have been on Worst Roommate Ever on Netflix. Just playing Jared says, I'm going to go and check the attic as soon as I get home. (laughs) Please do. Listen. I, this has really freaked me out. Yeah. yeah. That's what yes. I wanted to also mention to you, Gareth, that if you have a big 14-bedroom house, these people don't live in bedrooms. No. They, they live in the spaces, that, what do you call it, the negative spaces of your home. The spaces right. where you'll never catch them. Right. You'll just hear... Oh, my God. Yeah, you'd think it's like a huge rat. What you think it's just rats. What was that movie called Mama? Oh my god. Oh, do you remember? Oh my god. Oh, god. Oh, oh, those little things. This, no, like a, a like a humanoid looking alien thing. Huh. It was a woman with the scraggy hair and she would crawl to you on all fours <laughs> around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine seeing that at night <laughs> in your own home. Oh, shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she would go, Mama. <laughs> Yo. So what what brought up frogging for me? 
<laughs> I am sleep. horrified. Yeah, you know what? <clears throat> Mash, if you don't come back for a few months, it's fine. <laughs> Ruined our morning. Jesus. No, I point out for me is the fact that in my in my apartment, the very same apartment I'm still in that I moved into last year. That you year, had the nightmare moving into, remember? Yes, yes. That but as you couldn't get those people out. Yeah. Yeah, those those women. <laughs> you have to threaten them with violence. They have to throw their stuff out the mm, window. Yeah. Just a quick recap for people who don't know. No, Mash, um, Mash yeah. and Leanne, you should start a, an Jeez. eviction company. That you yeah. Yeah. We can like, wear biker jackets without sleeves and ooh. carry knives in our pockets. And go and threaten people to get out of places. Get lots 100%. of tattoos. Yeah, that's the only way. Violence is the only way to get these people out. Sure. So I moved into this apartment last year in June. Was it July? Uh, it was June. First of June is when I moved in. And it was quite a mission because um, the people, the day I moved in, the people who were staying there were still oh, staying there. they hadn't there. moved out. They hadn't oh. moved out and they were not planning on it. They were just sitting. I arrived with my moving company. They were sitting there having tea. We oh. basically evicted them and threw their stuff down the balcony. Um, just fun, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, now, I've been living there for close to a year. Um, my lease is ending in June mm. this year. Um, and actually, thirty first May, but it's 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 been a bit strange um, because I, it's it's on the top floor. It's a top floor apartment, mm. um, and the wind outside. It's been very windy lately, mm. and the wind has actually been blowing. You know those covers that cover Fen like outdoor furniture. No, um, they cover the ceiling. Like you lift it up and then go into the ceiling. Those covers. Oh, like the, the trap hole. The... Yes, the trap hole cover. Yeah. Is, is that what it's actually called? The trap, trap hole cover. It's trap door. Trap yeah. door. Okay, trap door cover. <laughs> it's been very windy. I live on the fourth floor, um, top floor rather. And these trap door covers, my apartment has two of them inside. Yeah. They've just flowed off. Yeah. Oh, They're shit. just gone. So now when I walk, I see this dark hole every time i look up but hasn't it just flapped back no so no it's happened it's happened at this house i was talking about as well mm. where it it actually becomes dislodged oh, yes Jesus. because of it's strong not, winds there are no hinges on it oh there's nothing yeah. it literally just lifts up it's just a loose piece it's happened of to me too something um also house sitting at my brother's house once and the, <gasps> wind, the wind was going crazy mm. so imagine. and i heard a massive like I thought someone had fallen through the ceiling that, <gasps> that loud, <laughs> crept to the bedroom with the dog. Also, the dog was also alerted, <gasps> and it was um, like an old sunroof with a skylight. Yes, where he also had a piece of wood in there, and it had come dislodged and fallen down. Hey, boo! Can you imagine if you are sleeping in bed at night and you look up at the trapdoor and there's that this head, right. this head <gasps> pokes out and goes hello? <laughs> yeah, that, that was like the or one. Or doesn't say anything and just carries on looking. No, no, no. Oh, Jesus. So the one night I'm in bed <gasps> and I hear because I had gravel outside of this bedroom and I'm lying in bed and I can hear the gravel crunching. There is someone outside my sliding door in yeah. my bedroom. The French doors. Jesus. This... Oh. So I go, hello. Oh. And this person goes, hello. Ha! Huh? <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> what on earth? <gasps> what is, who Man. was it? So I go, hello. And he says, security. <laughs> huh. were, the, the alarm had been, the panic button had been set off. And oh, he was investigating. Yes. But sometimes you don't want the person to respond because it could actually be quite scary. Jeez, that is, I've good. actually had a similar experience at my aunt's house. Um, she makes me house sit for her quite often. I still do to this day. And um, every time she leaves, there's she has lots of rats in the ceiling. You know, mm. so it's not a secret anymore. Huh. We all know in the family. And... <laughs> And they're quite big rats as well. Mm. And sometimes it sounds like... I'm a gundwan. Yeah, it literally sounds like somebody is tiptoeing in the ceiling. Mm. Those are big times. fucking rats. Those are big fucking rats. And, <laughs> every, and the first few times I heard them, I used to actually press the panic button on uh, the remote. And I'd sleep with a knife under my pillow and the panic button um, <laughs> oh at her God. house. And yeah, and uh, I remember one time, so this the the... Uh, what's it called? The security company. Mm. They have access to the house. They have the, the remotes and everything. So these guys <laughs> arrive. I'm in my bedroom. I have my own bedroom at her house. Mm. And 
these guys arrive. I don't hear the gate because my bedroom's like far at the back. And they walk around the house and then they see that there's some light from this one bedroom. And mm. they're shining their torches and stuff. They start knocking on the <gasps> window. Oh. oh. I literally, I'm not gonna, okay. I, Go I on. crapped myself. <laughs> really, really? I did. It's very, I did. It's very embarrassing. Yeah. But <laughs> it was it was not a normal situation. It, it I was terrified. And after that, I well, I haven't had set for my aunt ever since. To mm. say the least. No, yeah. I don't blame you. I wouldn't yeah. want you just because of the rat. <laughs> Certainly. Oh yeah. So the 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 manhole covers. What do you call them again? Trap the doors. trap door covers. Why do I say manhole? Manholes in the ground. Over <laughs> Either way, the trap door covers at my house have completely flown off. Mm, so it happens. It's horrible. Yeah, I've called my company to come send someone to just climb in the ceiling and then get them back and probably use a little bit of tape or glue just mm. to keep them in place. But, but hang on, isn't that the... Because you're renting. Yes, I am. So then the landlord must sort that out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's just my landlord lives in Europe, so she has a company. Oh, a <laughs> so rental company. A rental company, mm. yeah. Okay. So I have to reach out to them to come and fix it themselves. Um, I have reached out to them. Um, they said that they'll organize sometime during the week. Just I'm only available after five. But <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I, I've been living with this big hole in my ceiling. When I look up, it's just dark. No, that's, up that's scary. I wouldn't like that. And to make that. things worse, there's another a man. Oh, I keep saying manhole cover. Trap door. Trap door no. cover. Trap door cover. Outside my apartment, that's also flown off. So as soon as you leave my apartment, um, the ceiling You've up got outside. Random holes. It's like a dere- yeah. It's like a derelict. Yeah. <laughs> so like I'm, a ruin. It makes me nervous. so this shack you live in. Um, (laughs) (laughs) listen to this Uh, Carl says over the weekend the drain outside my kitchen was blocked I moved the cover and there was a rat floating in the water (sighs) after drinking two spoons of water I spent the next one and a half hours cleaning (laughs) that's just disgusting Jesus. So nobody's going to point out that Mash's obsession with manholes (laughs) wow we know that we know that I like what Jonathan Wolfson said further back. It just says, um, yeah, leaves it. a note in the fridge yeah. saying, get salted butter. <laughs> and I'm just finding that note <laughs> randomly. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time for this morning, but thank oh, you thank for uh, joining us. Yeah, this is scary <laughs> stuff. I, I didn't need to know about frogging, but I'm kind of happy I do now. I'm glad you all did. And, uh, and always good to see you, Mash. Lovely to have you on the show. We will uh, catch up with you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. bright and early. Have an awesome Monday. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers.